Okay, so now that we've gotten requirements under hand, let's look at how we can start designing our database. And, and to do so, we're going to start at the high level and look at a conceptual model. It's a good tool to get a very broad um, look at the database um, and start building a what I'll call like a high level structure. So let's let's look at what I mean by that and move forward. So what really is a conceptual model? It's it's quite simply a simplified representation of our final database and it focuses in on that broad picture. Uh, a lot of the specifics are removed. So basically if, if I gave you a conceptual model you're, you're not going to be able to build the database straight from it but it definitely gives you the starting point so that we could start to put the details in place. Okay and that's the key so we're not going to get too overwhelmed. So this is what a conceptual model looks like and it helps us to start to organize the major pieces, right? So think about it as if you were to architect a house, this would be like the way that you would start to organize the rooms and where the rooms, how they would be adjacent to each other. So we're going to think about what are the major pieces in our database? What are the major objects or entities like employee and customer? and maybe the order and like the sales order, the customer order, how they're ordering pizzas in our case and how are they related to one another. And that is going to then help us drive to the architecture of our database. So one of the key features of a conceptual model is, is it helps to define the business needs. So what are we looking to um, convey within our system. So are we needing to track customer orders, um, employees, stores? It helps establish the vocabulary. Are we calling the people that work at our place of business employees? What do we call the people who buy from us? Are they customers? Are they called something else? So it'll start to foster that communication between us and as a team as well as us and our our client who could be you know either um, maybe an outside company that's paying for our business or others within our corporation you know if we're in IT and it helps to build that plan to really for success so that we are able to have the best possible chance to build a system or database that people can use for their goals. So here are some of the steps that we are going to go through um, when we go to build a conceptual model. So the first is that we're going to identify uh, business objects. Okay. And the business objects are going to be thought of as like the nouns of our database so employees customers orders stores those are all nouns and then we're going to identify relationships between objects so an employee works for a store a customer orders pizza pizza is a product those would be like relationships and then we're going to determine carnality and okay, there's an interesting word carnality that means you know like how many of one thing relates to another. So that's like one-to-one -one relationships and one-to-many relationships. We're going to talk more about that in a bit. And then we're going to name the relationships. So we've already kind of talked about that. Employee works for a store, right? And then we're going to keep repeating this process as necessary because we may find that as we start to identify objects that it makes us to think a little more in a certain area and we start to realize that we need to kind of flesh that area out a little further than um, we first had thought. And as we do that, we'll start to build out our model. So what are the entities within the conceptual model? So loosely speaking, you can think of the entities as the nouns, and they're really the starting point for the um, database design. I like to 
first think about what entities I would start with. And then from there, I look to see what relationships I can put between the entities. So for instance, in this case, I may have brainstormed that I have customers and orders. And then what I would think about is, is what is the relationship between the customer and order? Well, I could think of, well, a customer is going to place one or more orders with my business. And to do that, I know that there's the um, relationship of the cardinality, which is there's one order too many or one customer too many orders. And so here I actually have a relationship that's one to many. Okay, so let's talk about this relationship. Okay, so there's, there's a, a notation that we're going to use throughout the course to denote cardinality and it's called crow's feet notation because these look like little crow's feet and the denotes either one many or zero so if i have a um relationship that goes to one it's going to be set up like this and what this means is, is that the, the relationship on the on this side which would be the right side has to have one okay and then many would be like so so this means this side of the right side has to have many items. So like in the case of customer to order, there could be many orders. If I have one or many, that means that like it's required, that would be, there has to be one or many orders. So at least one order, or there could be many orders on the right side. If it's one and only one, essentially means it's limited to one and it has to be one. Or there could be zero or one. So this, the um, zero can also mean optional. And then the one. So this is how you can combine the notation together. What you'll see us use quite a bit will be one and then many. And you may see one or many. But the, the two that are most popular are the one and the many. Okay. These are ones you may see I put them here so that you you see it and are, are able to recognize them but the ones that are used most often are the two at the top so here are some examples of some of the um, cardinality in action so let's just quite let's talk about these real quickly so a one-to-one -one would be a person owns owning a passport a person may own a passport they can only own one passport and it's optional, right? So you can think of um, some people may have um, a passport, but they may not. Um, there might be, a, I can think of one or two cases where I know some people that have two passports, but they really shouldn't. So um, most people only have one passport, right? Uh, a one-to-one -one mandatory would be a mother has a child and a child has one mother. But in the case of that single child, you're not going to find a case where that single child has more than one mother, okay? Now, if this was slightly named differently, a mother could have multiple children, okay? But in, in, if you think about just one, one baby, what a mother has that one baby uh a one to many would be a customer places like one or more orders with a business if they don't place an order they're not a customer in some respects some places may consider a customer the minute they walk in the door right and then a many to many could be a teacher uh works at a school okay and you could set this up so that here a school can has at least one teacher or many teachers and then if a teacher goes on leave then they may not be at that school at that time right and they may not be registered to be teaching at that school at that time they could be at a, on a like uh an administrative leave or for, you know like uh, maternity leave or family leave so these are examples of cardinality
in our next lesson, we're going to actually go through the steps to see what it takes to build a conceptual model.